In this tutorial, we are going to cover how to create basic flowchart diagram in Microsoft Visio. In this video, we are going to focus on the e-commerce shopping process, and we will create a Visio diagram as a set of step-by-step -step instructions. I will show you how to use BPNM Management Notation, which stands for Business Processing Management Notation, and how to create Visio diagram using BPNM. In the diagram itself, we will show how customer starts shopping, navigates through the page, and what kind of action does the customer do, what happens with the order, and things that happen in the back office. And we will do it as a diagram in Visio by doing step-by-step -step instructions. My goal is not just to explain you the functional aspects of e-commerce shopping, but also to explain you how you can build this diagram using Microsoft Visio. I will also point you to the file itself, so if you'd like it just to download the file and use it for whatever purposes you need to use it for, you will be able to see the link in the description of this video and just start with the file itself instead of building it from scratch. So let's go ahead and get started. To create BPMN diagram, you navigate to the file, new, and then you have a list of templates presented in Visio. BPMN is displayed right here. But if you don't see it, what you can do is you can say BPMN, which stands for Business Process Management Notation. Search for it, and it will show you all templates available for BPMN. We will pick BPMN Diagram Template, and you present it here with multiple choices. From my understanding, it's just the different styles, no per se uh, differences. So you can pick any style. The key is to have all the types of shapes that we are planning to use. So I'm going to pick this style just because I like it. There is no other reason. And we'll start brand new diagram. I am going to close this diagram. And um, what you see here is um, this is the template. Microsoft basically shows you the first page that creates it by default and it creates some help information right on the screen. It shows you the swim lanes as a pool a pool one and pool two start and end point and it shows you the tasks there's also help how you can do some basic tasks but which are very helpful and we will look at those later in the video how to align uh, how to add text and how to do diagram validations so we'll look at all of those but in the meantime we will delete it and i'm going to select the content and click delete uh, same here i'm going to select the content and click delete first step let's expand the stencils bar and look at all BPMN uh, shapes that we just so you guys understand what we will be dealing with. We have start and end shapes. Uh, this is end event. This is the starting shape. Uh, but what we're interested in immediately, we're interested in the uh, swim pool and the lane. So this is the one. Unfortunately, it's not at the start, even though you have to bring it uh, first. Uh, it's at the bottom of the list of uh, shapes. And we will build it and install it. And uh, our first swim lane is for the customer. So let's rename default name function into the customer. I am going to make it a little bit larger on the screen so we can see better. And um, to do it, you use the zooming lower right corner of the Visio screen. And I'm going to make the swim lane a little bit bigger for the customer. So we'll start with the start event. And to start with the start event, you just drag it onto the swim lane and see once it's selected you just start typing and uh, we'll call it start so what is the first thing customer does let me ask you this question when it navigates to the um, e-commerce site so the first step in the process is really to navigate to the start page of the shopping site so let's do that multiple ways to do it we can bring the task in same way as i brought the start shape or if you have it hovered, for example, I start uh, stop typing, and you see this blue uh, triangles uh, right here next to the shape, and when I hover them, again, I didn't click anything, but I just hovered. It shows me the typically used shapes, and one of them is task as well. And as you can see, now I, I will click on it, and what Visio did, it uh, saved me a lot of steps. First of all, it saved me the step of dragging the task, then it saved me the step of connecting a uh, start shape and the task shape with the arrow. And now it allows me just to start typing what the task is going to be about. And the task is about to navigating to the start page of the shopping site.
customers can do multiple activities. They can search items, they can review recommended items, and they can review some specials. So let's reflect this in the diagram. I'll show you another way to bring tasks in. You just drag and drop the task, right? And the first thing we do is to uh, pinpoint most of the people just search for specific items, right? If you come to Amazon, uh, for example, you might uh, start searching. And another way to uh, add uh, tasks here, you can do copy and paste, uh, right? Which duplicates the item. And you see what Microsoft does, uh, Microsoft Visio does, is it shows us some guidelines. So if you want to locate the task item uh, aligned with the first item and aligned on that uh, middle line, uh, this green line pinpoints you and allows you to do it. So, but uh, next step for us is we uh, have a recommended section. So the task would be review recommended items. Right. And then the last way to do it, um, it would be similar to what I've done for the first uh, task box. So we will just introduce another task box and you see it tried to align it for us, but I'm going to keep dragging. And you see here it shows that the distance between search items, review recommended items and uh, this box would be the same. So and the last items would be review specials. So what we have here, we have one tasks that uh, one task that leads to three additional tasks. So we would need to uh, use a connector, and I will connect here because uh, that's one branch. I am going to move this arrow for the lower box from the middle connector to the bottom connector, and then I'll introduce the third connector here, and uh, I will connect it with review recommended items. To recap, we've identified three channels how customers can search for items, which are search for items, review recommended items, and review specials on the website. Based on this, what customers do next is they typically just select the items that they need to purchase, which is another task. So let's enter it, and we say identify item. And all of these activities, they lead to this particular action, identify item for purchase. So we will connect search for items. I'm going to switch to connector and we're going to connect search for items to identify item for purchase. And we'll connect review special to identify item for purchase as well. So now you see that all three ways of finding the item, identification step, where customers identify the item for purchase. Let's go to the next step where a customer will add items to the shopping cart. To do that, we'll add another task and we will say add item to the shopping cart. That customer has an option to apply a coupon or another promotional discount. So let's add another task related to this. And this leads us to the decision point where a customer would need to decide, are there more items that they would like to add or not. To add a decision point, we add it as a standard way of adding items and we'll just ask a question. More items? And if the answer is yes, then the customer will go back to this step in the process and I'm going to drag the line so it goes over so there's no intersections of, on the line. It just looks more professional. And here we will say that uh, it's yes that's really the answer here. But if the answer is no, we will continue uh, the checkout process. To do that, we would need to expand our swim lane a little bit. To do that, you just drag the swim lane to the right. The next task after adding more items is uh, the checkout process. And the checkout process is not just one specific task because it involves paying, it involves entering shipping address. So it's really a sub process. And this is where I'd like to introduce you to the concept of uh, uh, sub processes. There is a task for that. And sub process is really an activity that has more than one step here. So we will bring it over here uh, and we will connect it manually and we'll give it a title and the title would be a checkout process and I started adding in the wrong place so I'm going to use undo feature of Visio um, as you see on the quick toolbar there's an undo button 
and what I need to do to type the name of the sub process, I need to go back, select the sub process itself, and I'll type uh, checkout process. This is the time when I'd like to introduce you to another swim lane, which we'll call order entry system, which is the database, potentially, uh, that uh, keeps track of all the orders that you have or the ones that customers submit. So I'm going to minimize um, and make it smaller. So zoom out a little bit and add another swim lane. To do that, I'll just drag the uh, pool lane here and I'll call this swim lane order entry system. And I'll expand it to make it the same size as the uh, top swim lane. And we will introduce the data store here. And we will call this data store order entry system. And what we will do here, we will have a swim lane connecting checkout process with the order entry. And as you can see, um, order entry system doesn't have anything in the top. It only has connection points uh, in the middle. So one way is obviously to connect it uh, to this connection point on the sides of the database shape, so which works. But there's also a way to add uh, custom uh, connector shapes, and that's what you use a connection point button for in the tools section uh, of this uh, Visio ribbon bar. So this is outside of scope of this video. I'm not going to do it, but if you want to research, it's uh, rather easy to do, so you can do it. But we'll move on and add the last step or step before last in the process which would be another task and this task would be review and this is the task that will be done not by the system but it will be done by the customer and that leads us to the end and we'll modify uh, the connector a little bit just to make it look more professional and now I am going to show you a couple tricks so see this line it's not a straight line so a couple ways you can fix it one way is that just to drag it and now it's a straight line. I would like to show you a couple uh, tricks that you can use in Visio. So I'm going to zoom out a little bit again. Uh, right now, all these items are on the same line, um, but uh, we don't know that. And sometimes they may not be on the same. So if you really want to make them on the same line, uh, you select all of these items that typically uh, that should be on the same line. And then you say align and then you align all these items uh, in the middle. And Visio automatically aligns them. And then another trick would be if you want the same distance between items that just makes them look more professional, you keep them selected and you say position and then distribute uh, horizontally. And once you select it, Visio rearranged all the items. Uh, so the distance between these items in this line is the same. Now, first item without holding anything to select the second item. I hold the shift button I select second item and then I select the third item so now three items are selected or another way as uh, you well aware you can just drag and drop mouse uh, cursor selection and uh, what we will do we will align and this would be a center type alignment and we also want to do potentially uh, distribute vertically so they are in the same distance last couple tricks I'd like to show you is um, kind of to change the visual appearance of your diagram. So I'm going to zoom out a little bit so we can see everything. And now we can make the swim lane smaller. Now we know that the size is not as large. This is not as much space as we need. So we select everything. You can use shortcut control A to select everything on the diagram. And there are different shape styles. So if you don't like this color that I selected initially, you can change different uh, style or color. And that's right on the Home tab. Now you can also go into the Design tab, and there are a lot more options here. So you can select different themes. For example, maybe you want to select this theme. It doesn't look very good. You can always undo, right? This is an undo button. And you can even undo this. Um, but uh, you can play with the themes and find out the one that you like. And theme comes with the set of fonts and color. So that's uh, really good. Or you can just, if you're happy with the theme, then you can look at some different variants of the theme, right? So whatever you'd like to do, you can play with the variations right here in this part of the screen. And you can also pick the background color also like uh, this worldwide domination um, <laughs> or just worldwide um, image of the world. So if you want that, obviously this uh, by using undo button. And the last thing I wanted to show you is the 
tab cross-functional flowchart because we've selected BPMN shapes it comes with this cross-functional flowchart so you can do a couple things here um, sometimes it might be good to select and put a title of the diagram right into the swim lanes you need to select the uh, flowchart first now let's look at the styles here there are different styles that you can select and one style will show us that um, we'll have a title on the top so we selected everything I clicked select title on the top but nothing shows up why is that because I did not select the show title bar so now I selected show title bar and you see it doesn't look good because it added title to both swim lanes so let's undo this and what you need to do to add a title just top swim lane we obviously only need to select the top swim lane and then say show the title and that adds title only to the top swim lane you can move it a little bit use one page otherwise if you try to print it it will print on four pages which is something maybe what you want but uh, typically I try to save paper when I print if you like the content please make sure to click the like button and share with your friends also there's tons of information in the description of this video make sure to check it out Make sure to check out my other relevant videos and subscribe to my YouTube channel. We have a lot of great stuff planned in the pipeline and I don't want you to miss any of it. And if you'd like to get notified about all the new stuff that are coming out, make sure to subscribe to my email list as well. All links are here on the screen. Make sure to click to stay in touch. Thanks again for watching.